It's Todd Owens with Capital Chaos TV, and we're here tonight in San Francisco at Slim's with Carl from Nile. How you doing, Carl? Doing great, Todd. How about you? Doing great. Thanks for the uh, time with your uh, opportunity. Uh, first off, I want to ask about the uh, the current tour. You're on a, uh, I guess, 27 date U.S. and well North American tour, right? And uh, how's the how's the tour been going? So far, so good. We're having a great time. Absolutely. And uh, one of the things on this tour, uh, there's no direct support that you guys are bringing out, so you're just using uh, local bands in each market, I guess, two or three bands. Uh, how did that come about, and was that your thoughts, or how did that you know, all come about? Well, one of the things we noticed was uh, on these huge multi-band packages that it, it leaves no room for the younger bands. Um, and we believe that younger bands, local bands, are the future of metal with uh, no younger bands getting the opportunity to work their craft and develop and gain experience, you know, how do we expect to have metal 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Um, somebody has to give a fuck. Um, so, uh, you know, because of the, also the current economics of, of touring, it, it made a lot of financial sense as well. Um, why not? Let's, let's give the younger guys a chance to show their stuff, uh, learn their craft. Um, these days, the you know, opportunities to play are, are drying up. You know, when we started, man, we could play all the time. There was no shortage of gigs. Um, and it's really how we learned our craft was doing it. There's no better teacher than experience. Um, so in a way, it's kind of like us realizing that uh, this is our chance to give something back to the metal scene. And I know uh, early on in your career, you got some pretty good tours back in 15, 20 years ago with Obituary, Morbid Angels, stuff like that. So that must have, must have been great. And it's kind of you're just kind of giving back in your own way now, huh? Absolutely. Uh, if it weren't for other bands like Morbid, Cannibal, Obituary, Six Foot Under, um, helping us out, uh, you know, we would not be where we are today. So I believe there's a big karma circle in the world of metal. And... What goes around comes around. Sounds good. And then uh, I've read that you guys are doing like a, a massive set on this tour. So what is that? Is it just <laughs> one set? Is it two sets? Uh, and then also maybe you could talk about uh, some of the songs I think are you're playing live for the first time maybe? Yeah. yeah it is a, a longer set. It's uh, 75, 80 minutes of Nile. Um, uh, we're pulling some stuff out we haven't done ever. And some stuff we've... Uh, haven't done in over a decade, like uh, Chapter for Transforming into a Snake, Iskander du Karnon, As He Creates, So He Destroys. Yeah, some stuff we really wanted to play, and uh, yeah, a lot of fans have been lapping it up. Yeah, it's, it's good. So when you get ready for a tour like this, how do you come up with a set list, especially now that you've got such a huge back catalog and you can't play everything, but how does that set come about? Well, it's, it's tough. Um, there's so many songs that we want to play um, and that fans ask us for that writing a set list is extremely painful. It's like we start off with all the stuff we want to play. The group effort then? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we just start getting out the Sharpie and Xing stuff out. And it's, it's a very painful process. Um, and then what about uh, the rest of this year tour-wise? I know you, you've got this tour, and then I think you might have 10 days off, and then you go over to Europe. Is that correct? Uh, no, we're going to Costa Rica uh, for our first show there ever. Uh, then we're doing some festival stuff in June in Europe. And uh, I think that might be it for the year. And then we're going to go back to working on the record, uh, hopefully finish up by the end of the year. Uh, before we talk about the new stuff, I just want to ask, it's been almost uh, coming up on two years, I guess, since uh, your last album, At the Gate of Sith, you came out, and uh, it was back in 2012, so what's your feeling now, maybe 18 months in? I know uh, it's got pretty good reviews and stuff, and thoughts maybe a year and a half down the road? Mm, well, uh, it was a surgically clean record. I, I think it's you know quite possibly the cleanest death metal record ever attempted. Um, I think, though, that on the next record, we're going to focus more on just pure savagery. Um, we already satisfied the Jones for getting it surgical and ultra-precise and all that. Uh, now I want to hear some savage stuff focused you know, on the pure elemental uh, darkness inherent in metal. 
Okay, so let's talk about, you said uh, new stuff possible down the road. Have you, is, how does the writing process work for you guys? Do you write when you're on tour? Do you just wait till you get off tour and then write? Or We wait till we're home. Um, it's easier to focus. Um, uh, yeah, writing on tour kind of gets messy. You come up with brilliant stuff and then you get busy on tour for a couple of days and you forget whatever it was you did. So we just don't even try it anymore. And you're currently on Nuclear Blast, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And how's how's the relationship with Nuclear Blast? Oh, uh, it's been really good for seven years now. Yeah, seven years we've been with them. Good, good sport. Uh, well, there's no real such thing as support anymore. Everything's changed, right? Everything's changed. Uh, the ideas of tour support and label support are, you know, a myth from the long distant past. Yeah. The metal gods help those who help themselves. Goes back to the karma, right? <laughs> right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just wanted to ask a little bit about Dallas and the relationship with him. You guys, I guess it's almost 17 years, at least since he's been in the band. Did you know him before he was in the band? And maybe just a little bit uh, about uh, your relationship no, with Dallas? We, we met him when he showed up for his audition. Um, and he, uh, he was so incredible we hired him right there on the spot we we're like this is the guy we've been waiting for yeah and uh 17 years is a long time to work with somebody um there's uh been highs and lows and great sorrows and great joys but uh we're a team uh we're committed so we're pretty happy about it all right uh, another question I'd ask is you guys have never, as far as I know, released any live stuff and just wondered if there's ever any plans in the works to do something live, either audio or DVD or anything like that. Um, we get asked that a lot. Um, releasing it is really up to Nuclear Blast. If they want to, you know, put the resources into doing it, we'd be happy to do it. But no immediate plans or anything? No immediate plans, no. Um, just want to go back to the early days a little bit. I have down here 1993, and I guess prior band was was Mariah. Is that correct? And what what was that band like a little bit? And and then maybe just talk how you evolved into forming Nile. Um, well, that was uh, it was a different kind of metal. Uh, it was more you were with them. For, you had that band for quite a while, didn't you? Or uh, probably ten years. That was Peter Moore and I and a couple other guys. Um, and uh, he was like, you know. For the time, it was Metallica, Slayer-influenced. Uh, we had a, a singer who was like a, a Dio or a Halford, so it was really amazing vocals on top of you know, some really choice kind of metal stuff. Um, it was probably before its time. Um, nowadays, you hear bands like that all the time, and it's, it's you know, quite popular in Europe and Japan. Um, but it was destined not to be. And some early bands or influences, maybe that kind of led you towards forming Nile, or uh, well, when Nile started, uh, we were kind of past the early death metal kind of phase where it was had been really popular for a while, and then it got passe, but. We loved it, so we were going to do it regardless of whether it was in fashion. It became a glut in the market at one point. Right? Exactly, exactly. Um, there were so many suffocation cannibal clones. It was just, if that's not what you did, then fuck you. Um, <laughs> so we, it was really an insane idea, you know, playing, you know, death kind of stuff with Egyptian lyrics. It was like what the fuck are you thinking but we had no hope of succeeding or any, any care about it uh, we we're just doing the shit that made us happy um yeah and where did you develop that interest with egyptian themes or middle eastern themes or was that something that you had a long time or did it, where did that come from well uh, it was always an interest of mine but uh when uh, one day i kind of woke up about a couple months into you know being called Nile, I said, "What would I, as a listener, want to hear from a band called Nile?" And of course, that opened the door to a lot of like, "Well, I could do this, and I could do this thing here, and the possibilities are limitless." And you just went with it, ran with it. Just ran with it. Yeah, there was there was like no point in worrying about whether it was going to succeed or not because it was destined to not succeed. But I guess when you do something for the pure love of it people 
catch on to it. They they hear the the realness of it. They hear that it's from the heart and that you're giving something your all. You know, that's something that's always amazed me about metal audiences is they know what they're listening to and they fucking hear it. When you mean it, they hear it. When you don't, they know it too, usually. They know it. They fucking know it. Because you got to stand right in front of them. You know, metal shows are typically in venues where you're a foot or two foot, maybe three or four at tops from the front row. So you look into their eyes, they fucking know if you're for real or not. You're right fucking there. Did you have any, did you think you have any idea back then that 20 years later you'd still be touring with this band now, that it would have this longevity to it? Absolutely not. Uh, I knew I'd always be playing music, you know, most likely metal, because it's, it's who I am. It's what I do. It's what I love. But when we started now, we had no hope of success or even thinking that it was even possible. Because who would give a fuck about some guys from South Carolina? Who would give a shit? Well, you know what? It turns out that metal audiences don't give a fuck where you're from. They want to hear some metal kicks their fucking ass. That's what matters. Hey, this is Chuck Billy from Tessin, and I'm blowing it up. I'm blowing it up. I'm blowing up. On Capital Chaos. Capital Chaos. Capital Chaos TV.